Good morning. Welcome to First United Methodist Church, Normandy. We're going to start. The, uh, the opening hymn is 338. Jesus calls. No, 398. 398. Jesus calls us. Let's stand and sing. Jesus calls us for the turmoil. October the 5th, 
and Tim and Marge, Margie Mitchell, move out of OSR, they have an anniversary Friday, October 8th. Let's sing Happy Birthday to them. Anything 
healing in a hospital now is important. Very. We'll pray her up. Anybody else? Yes, Julia. Jonas's uh, brother, Cleve Tucker, is going to have a heart attack in Austin Tuesday. Jervis's brother is having a heart attack. His name's Cleve. Cleve Tucker. Okay. Um, somebody else. Debbie? Somebody else had their hand up. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I'd like Leslie Guy Uzuai. She's uh, she's recovering from COVID. They just took her off. Is anybody else? That neighbor I just read you about, he spent 30 days of work. He works for the city of Bryan, and he talked to his employer Friday, and he said, "You still got a job?" And he said. How far can you walk? Because he walked, he worked outside and he said, I walk around my block. It's sad, y'all. This is this is a terrible disease. Anybody got a joy? Y'all hurry up. I got a real good joy. <laughs> yeah, we got rain. But our Panthers won that first district game. Okay, any other joys? Okay, do you have anything to be joyful about? Okay. All right. Y'all have a great week. Don't forget your candy for trunk or treat because remember, we'll be inside. And if you know anything, let me know. Y'all have a good day. Did you hand up? I would mention uh, Mildred Hood's house, the family that moved in there, the parents are James and Sarah. They had a daughter, well, I guess Sarah had, had the daughter about two <laughs> weeks ago. She was two months early. And her name is Hannah, and she's in an ICU in one of, I don't know which hospital, but so keep, uh, keep Hannah in your prayers. Also, uh, James. And uh, Sarah, the parents, and then there's a couple of older brothers. There's uh, Clay and Jack. Clay and Jack. So the fact that I can tell you three of those names is, is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even despairing over Clay and Jack, although I, I should have remembered those two. Their last name is Marks, like your first name with an S. Really? Yes. <laughs> Well, I had it in my head that the name was Max, like M-A-C-K-S. No, it's Marks. Which my grand, my grandfather McClanahan, my dad's dad, he would he went by Mac, M-A-C-K. Um, <laughs> so we, we, I would ask that uh, Mary Williams and uh, Wendy Merkel and uh, Barbara Chalk, if y'all would come forward, please. We have a little presentation we'd like to to make. Okay, it's been asked that the whole Sunday school class come, and if, if you'd like to come, you may. If you'd like to stay in the pews, I think that's okay too. It's up to y'all. Thank you. They're not coming. <laughs> <laughs> They're shy. They're not shy. So our. Uh, So I, I don't know. I don't know that I know all the specifics, and so if something I say needs to be corrected, I hope that that, that will work well. Um, but 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 memorials through our church um, have have purchased a couple of plaques. A one in memory. In fact, it says in loving memory of Dennis Williams, who taught the friendship class until the Lord took him home. I'm gonna let you know that. It's beautiful and it's wonderful. Thank y'all.
And then uh, the other one is In Loving Memory of Billy Ray Jones, who taught the friendship class for 32 years. So, uh, Dennis taught for five years, and uh, when he passed away, Ray Harvey stepped in for our teacher. And uh, I would like to present the class to our Sunday school class. Well, in loving memory of Billy Ray Jones, we all know how much he meant to this church and, and all that he and Katie did for our church. And like I said, he taught for 30 years and uh, was a wonderful teacher. And yes. I think this is a great honor. Yes, I do too. To present to, to the Sunday school. It's class. very nice. Thank y'all. This is all that I can say. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Y'all would like. Yeah, yeah. Thank y'all. Through my uh, uh, through the time that I've been here, I have heard wonderful things about Dennis and his teaching, about the Bill. I, I can't call him Billy, but about Bill and his teaching, and, and also about Wayne. And so we have been blessed to have good teachers in that class. During the uh, the story I tell during Sunday school, I'm a twin. That's the story I tell. Um, but through, let's uh, let's bow for prayer. Lord God, as we come to you in prayer, we pray that you would make us mindful of all that you bring to us, the many blessings that you give, that it's in you, O oh Lord, that we have hope. It's in you, O oh Lord, that we prevail no matter what comes our way. Too frequently we fall short, we fail. We don't do the things that uh, we should do, even the things that we would want to do. And we need your, your grace. We need your love. And we ask you, Lord God, for forgiveness now. And we pray, Lord God, that you would lead us and guide us. We ask that you would place a call on our lives, that you would make it clear so that we could hear. And then help us to offer ourselves to you and to be obedient in all that you ask us to do. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And now let's join in our prayer of illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear the joy of what you say to us today. from God's holy word, the book of Exodus, chapter 4. The Lord said to Aaron, Go into the desert to meet Moses. So he met Moses at the mountain of God and kissed him. Then Moses told Aaron everything the Lord had said, sent him to say, and also about all the miraculous signs he had commanded him to perform. Moses and Aaron brought together all the elders of the Israelites, and Aaron told them everything the Lord had said to Moses. He also performed the signs before the people, and they believed. And when they heard that the Lord was concerned about them and had seen their misery, they bowed down and worshipped. This is the word of God written for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I would invite us now to stand and let's join together in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty.
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory to the Father. tells us, and we read in, in chapter uh, 4, that, that uh, you know, there became a king in Egypt that didn't know Joseph, didn't know what, what Joseph had done, and, and what the king realized was there, there were so many Israelites that he became afraid that they by themselves, or maybe they in alliance with one of the surrounding countries, could take over Egypt. And so he, he they, they went from being honored guests to being enslaved. And they put taskmasters over them, put them to work and, and making brick and doing other, other tasks. And uh, when, uh, so by the time that uh, Moses is born, there are so many Israelites that Pharaoh has, has, has tried to make it so that all of the male children, when they are born, are put to death. And I think one of the verses says, just throw the male children into the, the male babies into the Nile. And uh, Moses is born. He is uh, not discovered right away. He lives in the house for three months. And then finally they, they know that the time is coming, that he'll be discovered. And so they, they put together a basket that'll float. And they put that in the river. And the basket's discovered by Pharaoh's daughter. 
And Pharaoh's daughter decides she wants to keep Moses as her own. And, and, and as the story unfolds, Miriam, who is Moses' sister, is there, and, and she comes and offers to find someone to feed the baby. And so Moses' mother then gets to feed him and take care of him, being paid by Pharaoh's daughter. And so Moses goes into Pharaoh's house, and uh, so there on page 44 in the story, it's Exodus 2, chapter, uh, verse 10. When the child grew older, she, and this is Pharaoh's daughter, took, no, no, Miriam, I guess, took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. And, and, and what an image that is. And in my mind, when I read that, went straight to baptism. How, how we use water in baptism, how we, we baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit. And how in baptism, people are, are drawn, and it's a sign of new life. It's a sign of deliverance. It's a sign of being washed clean and forgiveness of sins, a sign of God's grace. And in many ways, it's in baptism, it's a sign of the new creation. And I think all of those might apply for Moses, as Moses has been granted a new life. And Moses is in many ways a new creation. And this, this action of Pharaoh's daughter makes it possible many decades later for Moses to come back and, and deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. And, and, and I'm, I was reminded, too, of, of the passage in John chapter 3, where Jesus says that, that, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And then Nicodemus is the one there with Jesus, and, and, and he says, well, surely this can't happen. You can't go back into your mother's womb and, and, and be born. And uh, Jesus said, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless, unless he is born of water and of the Spirit. And of course, it's John uh, 3, uh, 15, where we read, Everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. And then verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And then verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be Well, the, the, the slavery for the, for the Israelites seems to go from bad to worse. It gets harder and harder and harder. But, the, but, but we read there in the story that, that, that uh, the more the Israelites were oppressed, the more they, the more they multiplied. One of the resources I was looking at pointed out the, the, that this is one of the evidences of many in the Holy Scriptures that children are a gift from God. And, and, and one of the gifts that, that we can treasure, and certainly certainly those of us who've been blessed to be parents, we, we, we sense that. But, 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 but any child, whether, whether it's one of ours or whether it's another child, is a gift from God. And, and I think it's a part of the role of a faith community to help all children any way that we can, especially to help all children come to have a faith in God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. You know, we, we talked last week about Joseph and, and all of the struggles that Joseph went through before Joseph finally became the second in command of all of Egypt, and he was given the task of of collecting food so that Egypt would be saved from a seven-year famine, and how all of the struggles that Joseph went through prepared Joseph for the role that God had for him to do. And I think in many ways, all of the things that Moses experiences and Moses goes through prepares Moses for him finally coming back and encountering Pharaoh and asking Pharaoh to let God's people go. And I think us, we too, are prepared by God. All the experiences of our life, the the, the, the good times, the lower times, the struggles we face, in some ways are preparing us for whatever it is that God has for us to do at this moment in time. Well, Moses, uh, once he uh, is a young man, he uh, sees an Egyptian taskmaster, 
uh, being very cruel to some of the, the Israelite slaves, and he goes so far as to kill that taskmaster. And the next day, he sees a couple of the, the, the Israelite slaves fighting, and he's, he's trying to make peace with them. And they point out, they, they say, well, are you going to kill us like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? And so Moses learns pretty quick that what he did was not a secret, and that Pharaoh had found out, and Pharaoh was seeking to have Moses put to death. And so Moses runs to, to Midian, Midianite, and uh, he, uh, he runs into some daughters there who are feeding a flock, and the daughters, uh, after their father encourages them to, brings, brings Moses home, and Moses winds up marrying one of those daughters of Korah. And, and while all of that's going on, we, we read there on page 45, this is Exodus 2, 23 to 25. During the long period the king of Egypt died, the Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out, and their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. God heard their groaning, and he remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. So God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. You know, that passage reminds me that when we cry out to God, God hears. When we cry out to God, God hears. Now, now the, the, the ultimate result of what God hears and what happens may not be the results that we're hoping for. But what I, what I am sure of is that, that God hears us when we cry and God sees us through any circumstance we face in our life. It's just after we read this part that we have Moses encountering the burning bush. The, the bush that is consumed by fire and it's not burning up and God's voice comes out of the bush. And, and that's where we have the, uh, the dialogue where Moses finally says, well, who do I say sent me? And, and, and God responds, I am who I am. Say, I am sent you. And that's where we get the, the name for God that we'll use sometimes, Yahweh or, or Jehovah. You know, I saw a bush, or it was actually a little sapling tree, that I think maybe looked a little bit like what the burning bush saw. I was, I was driving in the middle of a thunderstorm, and as I'm coming up a rise in the road, about to crest and go back down the other side, lightning strikes just on the other side of the rise, and I could feel it. It was just that close. And as I, as I go up over the rise and come back down, there was about, I don't know, six, seven-foot sapling tree that was completely engulfed in flames. And, and my, my, my working theory is the lightning struck that tree. And, and, and the, the flame had had any time to do really any damage to the tree. The leaves were all still there. And I'm sure within, you know, just a couple of minutes, the whole thing was just a pile of ash. But, but as I drove by, I thought, man, I wonder if that's sort of what the burning bush looks like. So God tells Moses what God wants, and Moses starts to say, look, God, you can pardon me, but I have these speaking issues. I've got other reasons. This is probably not a good thing for me to do. And then God says, no, I'm the one who helps people speak. I'm the one that helps people hear or not hear or see or not see. You know, and God's basically saying, I'm going to see you through this. And even after all of that, Moses says again, he says, pardon your servant, Lord. Please send someone else. You know, I have used this line myself, although I <laughs> paraphrased in a different way. <laughs> How often has God put something in front of us that God wants us to do? Sometimes we realize it, maybe sometimes we don't. But the times we realize it, how often do we say something or maybe do something that says, let someone else do this? I know, I know I've been guilty of that, and I suspect all of us from time to time perhaps are guilty of that. But the thing is, is God calls called Moses, you know, and, and, and it was pointed out in the video that goes with us that we're, we're doing in our different studies and in Sunday school, how as you look at Moses, Moses is probably the least likely person any of us would fix to choose. In fact, from, the, from, from an earthly perspective, from an earth story perspective, Moses is a bad idea for this job. And, but, but the thing is, is that what, what Moses has go, going for him trumps everything else because God wants Moses. And uh, I've heard it said this way, you know, anyone in God makes the majority. 
Anyone God makes a majority. Well, so then God tells Aaron to go out and meet Moses. That's the passage we read from, from Exodus chapter 4. And the Mo so, so Aaron goes and meets Moses. And then the, after, after Aaron and Moses meet, and Aaron is convinced, they call together the elders and the leaders of the Israelites, and, and they perform signs before them. And they believe what's about to happen. And so when they heard that, the Lord was concerned about them. They bowed down and worshipped. They were ready to go. And so Aaron and uh, Moses had their first audience with Pharaoh, and Pharaoh is not impressed. In fact, Pharaoh decides, after meeting with Moses and Aaron, he's going to make things even harder. And he, 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 makes, he, takes, he takes basically some of the help away from the Israelites, but says they still have to produce the same number of bricks and do the same things. And it was next to impossible for them to do it. And so, so literally within a page in the story, we have um, the leaders coming back and, and they say, May the Lord look upon you and judge you. You have made us a stench to Pharaoh and his officials, have put a sword to their hand to kill us. So they went from believing and worshiping God to dreading what's going to happen next. How often do we go from belief to doubt? You know, I, I think that, that, that this must have been a real setback for Moses and Aaron as they thought, well, God told us to come. God told us what to say. We came. We said. And things got worse. You know, I think that's a good lesson for us to remember that, it, that as God calls us and God sends us to a place and God or God tells us to do something and we do it, Often, there might be setbacks and there may be results that aren't exactly what we think they would be. We may face a tragedy. We may face a loss. We may face hurt because our enemy doesn't want us to believe. Our enemy does not want us to engage in the work that God wants us to perform. Now, as Moses and Aaron go back to Pharaoh, the, the plagues begin. The plagues of the turning water and blood, the frogs, the gnats, the, uh, the flies, the pestilence of the livestock, the boils, thunderstorms of hail and fire, locusts, darkness for three days. And then, then the last of the plagues is the death of the firstborn. Where, where Moses is told by God that that the Israelites are to have a sacrifice, they're to roast a lamb, they're to take some of the blood from the sacrifice and put that blood from an unblemished lamb across the doorpost. So that when the angel of death comes over and passes over the houses, that the blood of the uh, of unblemished sacrifice is over the door. The angel will just come over. But if that blood's not there, the firstborn male will, will die. You know, when, we, when Jesus was with his disciples for that last meal, and we call it the Last Supper, that was Passover. Jesus and his disciples were celebrating Passover. And it was out of Passover that we receive from, from Christ the practice that we call Holy Communion. Because it was during that supper that Jesus took the bread and said, this represents my body. Jesus took the blood and said, this represents my blood. It's Jesus' unblemished blood that he shed on the cross for us. That allows us to be forgiven. Allows us to be delivered from death to, to life. And then Christ's resurrection three days later shows us the victory that God has over sin and death. You know, I would suggest that as we, as we move forward, that we pay attention. In this story, there are so many different places where if it had gone just one way or another way, I'm not sure we would be looking at the same story. I'm not sure that Moses would be the one that was there. But, but Moses paid attention. When the burning bush, he saw it, he went, he paid attention, and he he, while he didn't want to, he did listen and take the time. You know, uh, Larry King was uh, 
uh, you know, we know him as an interviewer and have, have done interview shows for a long time. But there's a story that one time Larry King was being interviewed on a, on a local TV station. And the interviewer was, uh, he noticed the interviewer was not paying any attention at all to what he was saying. You know, the interviewer had some prepared questions and read the first question and Larry King gave the answer. And then read the second question, Larry King gave the answer. And, 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 the, and while Larry King was speaking, the interviewer was looking somewhere else, paying attention to something else, not listening or paying attention to him. So the so the third question comes, what do you think is the secret to being a successful talk show host? So, so Larry King decides he is going to change things up a little bit. He says, well, in my case, it's the fact that I'm an agent for the CIA. They get me good guests. And I broadcast signals and code words to other agents during my show. Of course, none of that was true, but he just kind of made it up because he knew the interviewer wasn't going to catch it. But what was funny was, was everybody behind the scenes, you know, the producers, the camera people, the go, all those people were laughing so loud it started to disrupt the show. And then, and then the interviewer just read question four, like nothing had ever <laughs> happened. You know, sometimes we kind of do the same thing. We don't pay attention. And we aren't kind of on the lookout for, for messages God might be sending to us. Maybe, maybe we see someone who's hurting or hungry or needs help. Maybe, maybe there, there's someone who speaks to us. And God's message is coming through what, what is said. Maybe we, we see someone who's hopeless, living in despair, experiencing a lack of love. And those are all opportunities for us to step forward and offer the hope that comes from a relationship with God. The next thing we pay attention, the next thing is we offer ourselves. Once we get the message that there's something that's needed to be done, we become available. We offer ourselves to do whatever it is that, that God wants us to do. And then, and then the, the third thing I would say is that we're obedient. We're obedient. Moses paid attention. He was at the burning bush. And when, and when God, God had to convince him a little bit, but God told him Moses offered himself. But then Moses was obedient and went to Pharaoh and did all the things that God wanted Moses to do. You know, we may have opportunities for folks to to work with children or youth or the share shop or the Gila house or the food pantry or even something else. But we have to pay attention. We have to offer ourselves. And then once God makes it clear to us, we need to be obedient to the work that God would want us, would want us to do. There was a father, and this is a, a story that was told, told by, uh, by Lloyd uh, Ogilvie. And, and it's a father who was teaching his son how to pray. And it was a nighttime prayer. And so they were working on this prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray my Lord, my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to keep. And so he was working to get his son to remember this prayer. And so they were, they were getting to the point where the son was saying the prayer back to the father. And so the son says, to, says it back, but when he, when he gets to the last line, he reverses it a little bit. And he says this, he says, if I should wait before I die, and then he stops. And he realizes he said that backwards. And he tells his dad, he said, Dad, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't say that the right way. I got mixed up. And his father responded, you know, I don't know that you did. You know, that might be a better way to say that prayer. If I should wake before I die, that we wake up to the call that God has for us, to whatever the burning bush for us looks like, that we offer ourselves, and that we're obedient. Oh, that we all would get
get that opportunity to wake before we die. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for your love and for your grace, and we thank you that you have something for all of us to do. Help us, Lord God, to be witnesses to the good news of Jesus Christ. We pray that people that don't know Jesus right now will know Jesus because of our people and the work that we do. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're preparing to receive Holy Communion. The liturgy is on page 12 in the hymnal, or you can just follow along on the, uh, on the screens. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's pray together. Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not been your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. Delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet, through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I would invite those who are helping me to serve to please, to please come forward. That's fine. That's fine. 
over to you. Place balls with the elements that have the seals on them. So, if you know of someone that you could take communion to, you're welcome to take uh, these as needed to offer to someone who's not able to be here today. If you would rather receive communion using one of those, you're also welcome. All is ready. I invite you to come.
Let's join now in prayer after receiving. If you're following along in the hymnal, it's on page 11. Let's pray. Eternal God, God, we give you thanks for this holy ministry in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may grow into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, we're receiving our offerings on, a, on the, there's a plate there at the back door, there's plates here on the rail, there's also a plate back there in the office area. Our, uh, our rail offering that we're collecting in the month of October is going to benefit the uh, food pantry, and so and, and for that we're using the baskets that are on the rail. If you would mail an offering to the church, the address is uh, Post Office Box 267, Northern G, Texas, 7787. I invite us all now to stand and let's sing our dog song. Praise God from the room of blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.